Hello, I'm Paul Seven Lewis, and welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. In this episode, I'll be choosing the 10 best theatre productions that you can get streaming into your home, plus uh, a little bit more about some of the streaming services. When a theatre production is filmed, you get the opportunity to see some great acting, but you lose the very thing we love, theatricality. There's something fundamental to theatre, people performing in front of you, that's lost when the fourth wall is replaced by a screen. So in this review, I'll be looking at those shows which have survived the transition best, either because you can still imagine being there at the performance, or because it's been filmed in a way that gives the screen version the qualities of a film. In my experience, the best ones are those that enable you to concentrate on the acting, because the majesty of a big set when it, uh, which fills your field of vision in a theatre, just doesn't come across on film. Let's start with three plays that are, to all intents and purposes, simply filmed stage shows. My number one is Hamilton. I mean, it could have been a disaster, but the Broadway production with original stars Lin-Manuel Miranda and Leslie Odom Jr. was expertly filmed over three performances and edited together to perfection. If you love this show as much as I do, you will not be disappointed with the way the vigour and emotion are caught by the camera. You can catch it on Disney+. Plus. Just take a month's subscription, because, frankly, there's not a lot else on this channel, unless, of course, you like Star Wars, Marvel and Disney animation. Which I do, by the way. My number two is Seawall, which is a very simple film of a one-man show. In this case, it's uh, been specially staged in the studio. And perhaps because it's a simple film of Andrew Scott speaking to the camera and telling his tragic story, it's all the more devastating. You can find it and pay a small amount to see it at seawallandrewscott.com. Number three on my list is Fleabag. Not the TV series, but the original stage play performed by the author Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I'm not saying the two TV series are not superior to this monologue. They probably are. But to see Phoebe Waller-Bridge sitting on a chair with no props and no other actors, simply speaking her lines, uh, miming taking a photo of her genitalia, doing impressions of other characters, and, almost as important, pausing. It's an absolute masterclass. There's a season called British Theatre. It's called season one, but so far there hasn't been a season two. You'll also find Benedict Cumberbatch's Hamlet and the National Theatre production of Frankenstein with Cumberbatch and also Johnny Lee Miller, in which they took turns in playing the Doctor and the Monster. It looks like uh, Sky will be launching the season of British Theatre on Sky Arts, uh, starting with David Hare's recent Beat the Devil, a funny, angry monologue about his near-fatal Covid illness, which stars Rafe Fiennes. I saw it at the Bridge Theatre, and uh, as I said before, monologues usually come over pretty well on film, and if it does come over as well as I hope it will, then it deserves to be my number four. Sky Arts have been quietly picking up some excellent shows, including my number five, Him, Lalita Chagrabata's Study in Masculinity, which stars Adrian Lester. I'd also recommend a film of the stage show Billy Elliot the Musical, Funny Girl with Sheridan Smith, a New York production of Jesus Christ Superstar with John Legend and Alice Cooper, and the 25th anniversary concerts of Les Miserables and Miss Saigon. If you love the arts, you could frankly spend your entire viewing time for many weeks dipping into the treasures this channel offers. Sky Art's biggest fault is that everything is lumped into one huge catalogue with no categories, so you have to scroll through hundreds of programmes, or of course, search if you know what you're looking for. On the plus side, it is free on Freeview. National Theatre at Home is a streaming service with a rolling selection of productions from the National Theatre and some other leading venues. The quality varies enormously, but a rule of thumb is the older, the more likely it is that it'll be an uninspiring theatrical record rather than a proper film that uses cinematic techniques to convey the show. Even then, some have come across better than others. Top of the tree, and my number six, is Romeo and Juliet with Jesse Buckley and Joseph, Josh O'Connor. Now, 
To be fair, this isn't really a stage show, although it's treated as if it is. In reality, it was made as a movie. And probably for that reason, although the play is greatly cut, there's speed and passion in this version. By the way, you can watch it for free if you search for it on Sky Arts. The less theatrical a production, the easier it is to enjoy. So a straightforward play like the excellent Hansard or Under Milk Wood are better choices than, say, Amadeus, which was brilliant to watch in the theatre with its orchestra on stage, but somehow not so interesting on screen. There are also some shows from The Young Vic, including two of the best plays I've seen in recent years. A View from the Bridge with Mark Strong and Nicola Walker, and Yerma with Billy Piper. I was tempted to put them in my top ten, but neither can convey the purely theatrical elements which made them so good. In the case of Yerma, the production took place behind glass, so the characters were like specimens. And in A View from the Bridge, there was a sense of the family being trapped in a ring, and an unforgettable coup de théâtre at the end. To try to persuade you to take a monthly subscription to National Theatre at Home, the shows come and go. Well, I suggest taking an initial month subscription and after that pay for, initial, uh, pay for individual productions. Digitaltheatre.com has a lot of good stuff. There are Royal Shakespeare Company productions, uh, open air production of uh, Sondheim's Into the Woods with Hannah Waddingham as the witch. Um, David Suchet in Long Day's Journey and Tonight, uh, Manchester Royal Exchange's Hamlet with Maxine Peake. But despite the great quality of all of those, I would start with It's True, It's True, It's True, which is Breach Theatre's dramatisation of the 1612 trial of the rapist of the painter Artemisia Gentileschi. It uses a transcript of the trial to show her own ordeal um, in a way that is often shocking, but also at times amusing uh, because of the way the three women who take all the parts parody the male behaviour. It works very well on film and it's my number seven. You can take a subscription to digitaltheatre.com uh, starting with a free trial, free trial or you can rent shows individually. Uh, then there are film versions of stage shows which have found their way onto the streaming services. Lin-Manuel's In the Heights received mixed reviews, but I thought it was a lot of fun, and you can catch my review somewhere uh, on this channel. You may miss the spectacle of the ensemble dance scenes when viewing on Amazon Prime, uh, compared with a cinema showing, but the vibrancy is right there, and I'm happy to make it my number eight. The film version of Everybody's Talking About Jamie has also slipped quickly onto Amazon Prime. It's a well-made film, but the musical, which works really well on stage when you're carried along by the emotion of the music, is exposed as a rather a wish-fulfillment fantasy when distanced by a screen. Marquee.tv is a specialist arts streaming service and that offers a set of Oscar Wilde plays of varying, variable quality in terms of the filming, but very well acted. Uh, the importance of being earnest, of course, uh, far from the best version I've seen. Lady Windermere's Fan, A Woman of No Importance with Eve Best. And my favourite, An Ideal Husband with Freddie Fox, Nathaniel Parker and Francis Barber. So this is my number nine. And if you love Shakespeare, Marquee TV like digitaltheatre.com, offers a number of Royal Shakespeare Company productions, including David Tennant's Richard III and Papa Asiedu's Hamlet, and an enjoyable Twelfth Night with Adrian Edmondson. You'll also find Donmar Warehouse's all-female Julius Caesar, Henry IV and The Tempest, directed by Phyllida Lloyd. If Shakespeare is your food of love, you can get excess of it by tuning into globeplayer.tv, where dozens of Globe Theatre productions nestle. They tend to be straightforward in the filming, but it's always a pleasure to hear good actors get their tongues around the great man's lines. The BBC, despite its excellent track record in showing stage plays, has surprisingly little in its library. The incredible Cypress Avenue with Stephen Ray was shown on BBC Four, but has now, it seems, disappeared. Hopefully not permanently. Still available, at least for a few more weeks, is my number 10, Uncle Vanya with Toby Jones and Richard Armitage, an excellent version of Chekhov's masterpiece, uh, which was originally seen at the Harold Pinter Theatre and was filmed specially for the BBC without an audience. In some ways, because the cast can speak normally into camera, it's better than the original. 
And there we have it. Roundup of theatre shows available on the small screen useful. I regularly review stage shows and film versions on this channel, so if you'd like to be the first to know about them, please subscribe. Happy viewing.